Sharks, they're some of the largest fish in the ocean. In fact, the four largest fish types are all sharks. From the majestic Greenland to the terrifying Great White, the alarming basking shark to the beautiful whale shark. But these top two, the two largest fish in the sea, are both filter feeder sharks. But what does this mean? Are there any other filter feeder sharks? Are there any other filter feeder fish? I'm going to try and answer all of those questions in the second video of Shark Week. Filter feeders are animals that feed on small particles and tiny organisms floating around in the ocean. This is nearly always plankton, very small and sometimes microscopic organisms that float around and aren't very good at swimming, so normally just get rushed along with the current. Filter feeders, especially the larger ones, use some kind of, well, filter to separate things like plankton from the water. For example, many whales, all called baleen whales, use what's called baleen to filter out the food from the water. How this works is that a whale takes in masses of water into its mouth and then pushes back the water out of the baleen, which filters out the food from the water. Whales and sharks aren't the only creatures to filter feed, however. The manta ray is another example of a filter feeder, as are flamingos. But this video is about the filter feeder sharks, not whales, flamingos or rays. The smallest filter feeder shark is the Megamouth shark. The Megamouth shark was discovered in 1976 and is extremely rare, with less than 100 being observed or caught since. It swims along with its mega mouth open, filtering out the plankton and sometimes even jellyfish that it feeds on. Unfortunately, not much is known about the Megamouth shark, not least because it is so rare. Because so few have been found, it is hard to say exactly where they live, but it seems that they live in the mesopelagic zone of the ocean and migrate with the plankton that they feed on. But this doesn't necessarily mean it's endangered. So little is known about these creatures, it's hard to say what state they're in. For all we know, they could be a thriving species, or they could be on the brink of extinction. So, for now, if you ever do catch a glimpse of this majestic creature, consider yourself very lucky indeed. The basking shark, on the other hand, is not quite so rare, although I would still personally consider myself very lucky if I saw one. The basking shark certainly looks rather menacing, and I'm sure that it has caused complete panic on numerous occasions, but, like the other two sharks in this video, it is completely harmless to humans. Unless you really, really try to get hurt by one. It feeds in a very similar way to the Megamouth, except its mouth is far larger. It filters the water out of its gills using its gill rakers, and consuming the plankton, fish eggs and krill that it's caught. Also, it collects water in a slightly different way, using what's called the ram feeder method, meaning that it collects water by, well, ramming into it, which in fish terms just means swimming slightly faster during feeding time. Both whale and megamouth sharks are theorised to use the suction feeding method, meaning that they suck in the water to feed. However, there is still some debate on the matter, with some saying that all three use the ram feeding method. The basking shark is huge, but similar to the megamouth, if not to the same extent, little is known about it. Satellites have shown that they are very migratory, being seen all over the world, from off the coast of the UK, in the Atlantic Ocean, and near Australian shores. Unfortunately, we know enough about the basking shark to place it in the vulnerable part of the threatened bracket of the conservation scale, just one place behind endangered. The last shark I'll be talking about in this video is the biggest fish in the world, which did help give it its name, the whale shark. The whale shark is a huge animal and can get to over 12.5 metres or 41.5 foot long. Like the basking and megamouth sharks, this fish feeds on plankton, krill, and often travels to the breeding grounds of other fish to feast off the eggs that they leave behind. Again, the way that the whale shark filters the stuff it eats is slightly controversial, with no one knowing for sure. Many think that it uses the suction method, some think it uses the ram feeding method, but it has also been theorised that, like many whales and fish, it uses the cross-flow filtration method, meaning that the water it takes in as it crosses past the gill rakers flows out of the gills as some food gets trapped in the gill rakers, but much of it flows to collection areas at the end of the mouth. But the whale shark isn't as peaceful and friendly as it first seems, as it has been observed often feeding on small fish, many of whom cling to the strikingly large creature in order to seek protection, as many predators are wary of the whale shark. 
but of course, the whale shark is still harmless to humans. Thank you very much for watching this video, I do hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're enjoying Shark Week. If you'd like to catch the rest of Shark Week here on the Benji Thomas channel, or would like to learn more about the wonderful life around us or worlds far away, then feel free to subscribe if you think we deserve it.